joining a private company A as the PRO. After two years, he comes back as the associate editor of the same newspaper, only up to join another private company as CPRO or Corporate Communications Chief uh, a couple of years later and returns two years later as resident editor of that same paper. So there's this endless revolving door because they do not see journalism and media as being different from any other industry. That Mr. Samir Jain told us very honestly in, the, in 1985-86 and we didn't believe it. But they really do not see the difference between working in PR and working in journalism. I also have to tell you that worldwide, particularly in the United States, but it's happening here, PR jobs are outpacing journalism jobs three to one. And that's apart from all the journalists who act as PR agents anyway, <laughs> regardless. So you have this endless revolving door. Look, what is good, I make a strong distinction today between media and journalism. <laughs> journalism is something very different from media. A.J. Liebling, the great American journalist and essayist, said many years ago, people everywhere confuse what they read in their newspapers with news. And, uh, and I think that's true. Journalism has been reduced to a revenue stream. And you can see it. You can see it in the memos, in the orders to journalists of what they can cover, what they cannot cover. How do you judge journalism as good or bad or anything? You do it this way. Journalism will, whether journalism is good, great, bad, will be determined by how that journalism engages with the great processes of its time. Okay? That's why. That's why Gandhi, Ambedkar, these were great journalists. They engaged with the huge processes of that time. So many of your freedom struggle leaders were also journalists. A lot of history has been lost on our present and succeeding generation. I was in Punjab three weeks going from village to village pretty recently till about two weeks ago. And it surprised me and it hurt me that even in Punjab, we celebrate Bhagat Singh as the great revolutionary, Bhagat Singh as the revolutionary activist, anti-colonial. All this is true and we should. How many people know that Bhagat Singh was first and foremost a journalist? That he wrote in four languages. He taught himself English in jail. Okay? He wrote in Punjab, he, wrote, he, worked in, he worked with or in the Akali. He worked with or in Veer Arjun. He worked for quite some time with Pratap. Pratap, he wrote there. And a lot of his political journalism came out in Kirti. Kirti we don't know this person as a journalist, but he was a journalist. And all this he does in four languages by the time he's 23. You had some journalists, okay? You had him, you had Gandhi, you had Ambedkar, you had Nehru. And all these people were journalists. They started newspapers and ran them under incredibly difficult circumstances. What are the great processes of our time and how do we engage with them? Inequality, deprivation, mass human displacement. I'm just giving you a sample. A 20-year agrarian crisis that has claimed 3,5,000 farmers' lives in suicides officially, which is complete crap. And in the last two years, please note that the National Crime Records Bureau has not published farmers' suicides data at all, which anyway was pretty, anyway was pretty uh, you know, distorted in the last few years, particularly since about 2013 and massively after 2014. Um, so you have... You have that crisis going on and everybody thinks it's about a loan waiver or it, it's, it's a hell of a lot more than that. How did we cover even the short term great processes like demonetization and GST and other, you know, the entirely again other celebratory. 
not looking at the extraordinary damage it's doing. Yeah. In the People's Archive of Rural India, we've been following little children being denied their scholarships because of Aadhaar. A girl from Anantapur whose name is Hindu, three times her card has gone and come back as Hindu. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, our reporter accompanied her to the damn place, okay, to, the, to get that corrected. Um, but this inequality, let's take just one of the, and, and then of course the great processes of our time, the rise, the astonishing rise of fundamentalism and hatred. Okay. The mega water crisis that we have, it's not a drought, it's a mega water crisis. And it, oh yeah, it's like, nice, isn't it? The Niti Aayog has recognized that there is a water crisis, but it's an a recognition entirely aimed at privatization of water in the name of rational pricing because Mr. Amitabh Kant has all, five days before the water report comes out, he writes a piece in the Times of India arguing for rational pricing. Do you guys know what water costs to whom already? Hmm. Every summer you see those lines of women, poor women in Maratwada at the tanker. From the, through the season they pay up to one rupee per liter. One rupee per liter starts at 45 pais at the beginning of the summer season. At the end of the summer season they pay one rupee per liter. In the same Maratwada, in the same Aurangabad region are 24 beer and alcohol factories which pay four paisa per liter. If you're IPL, you pay nothing at all. And all the editorials and comments were attacking the Bombay High Court judgment of two years ago when it said no IPL in Maharashtra during the drought. Okay? They attacked the courts on that issue. That was the one thing where they stood up to the courts. <laughs> but let's take one of these issues, inequality. It is greater than it has been since the 1920s or 30s. Okay? The latest Forbes list, 2018, March, for some reason, Forbes always releases its list of billionaires on March 8th, International Women's Day. <laughs> Maybe it's an aspirational thing because there aren't many women in the list. But there are, there are some. And anyway, the latest, in, in year 2000, in 1991, we had zero dollar billionaires. Then the list begins. In year 2000, we had eight. In year 2012, we had 53. In year 2018, India clocks 121 dollar billionaires whose wealth is equivalent to 22% of your gross domestic product. In a population of 1.3 billion, 121 individuals control wealth equivalent to 22, more than a fifth of your GDP. Which kind of crisis will you not have when you have that level of inequality? And just take the top man in that, incidentally when we were speaking about the media in this, the richest man in the country, 19th richest in the world, is also the biggest media owner, Mr. Mukesh Ambani. Mukesh Bhai, I'm very sure, does not know the names of all the media channels and concerns that he owns. <laughs> I could probably tell him. He doesn't, he won't know. All those channels you see, by the way, ETV, Hindi and ETV Malayalam, those are not owned by Inadu TV, that, that was an old story. They were all sold to an entity that is controlled by Mr. Mukesh Ambani. So, and oh, in the, in the Forbes list, in 12 months, in 12 months, Mr. Ambani added $16.9 billion, $16.9 billion. Rough calculation, translation, that's about 1,15,000 crores he added in 12 months. It means he added, because the Fox 2017 list gives the 22 billion figure and then suddenly he's 40.1 billion. It means he added nearly $2 million every hour. Must have worked very hard to do that. <laughs> now, you know, the, you know what that 20... Uh, what would it be if India's agricultural laborers and poor farmers were to try earning that on the NREGS? If you take the national average of the NREGS, 
it would take 18.7 million laborers, 18.7 million laborers working on the NRGS for 12 months without a day off, without holidays, Sundays, Saturdays, anything. It would take 18.7 million of them to generate the same 1,15,000 crores. That's what it would take. Now, it's possible, of course, that Mr. Ambani added that money by the dint of his labor and the sweat of his brogue. Uh, I mean, you can't believe that, but less charitable minds like my own think that it just had to do with little shifts in policy, okay, which favored his enterprise, Geo, over his rivals to the point of nearly killing them. You know, I, I, I remember waking up one morning and finding for the first time in history the face of the Prime Minister on the front page of a newspaper peddling a private product, Geo. That day I thought that I will amend the national salutation. No more Jai Hind, it's Geo Hind. <laughs> uh, so if you look at that kind of, that kind of inequality, we rank now number four in the list of world, in the world of billionaires, India ranks number four. We rank number 131 in the UN Human Development Index. That's where we rank in that. 131 in human development, number four in, uh, as I said, then in the media versus journalism, as I made the distinction, jobs of journalists have been lost. More than 10,000 media persons Journalists, cameramen, etc., have lost their jobs at least, and this is a very fragmented figure, since 2008 October, when in Maharashtra in one week 470 jobs were lost at the stroke of a pen. Last year, the last two years, as you know, the Hindustan Times has closed six editions, the Telegraph has laid off 600 people, Sarda went bust, the Daily Union of Journalists says 4,000 jobs lost in the last 60 months. The channels lay off on an equal. Some of the best journalists in this country are without jobs now. Because you need a different kind of journalist. And I'm going to show you what kind of journalist you need. It's a very, it's, it's not just about India. It's about where corporate media and corporate led capitalism is just now. This, all of you know of the legendary Time magazine. Time Incorporated, right? This is what uh, Time Incorporated has started evaluating its journalists from 2013. On what basis? Normally you have quality of writing, how prolific the person is, stories broken. They added an all-important column that has taken top priority. And that column of evaluation is beneficial to advertiser relationships. You can have a look at the table. The table. What happened there? Uh, they have the. It's very. It's fascinating to me that the journalist who scores highest. The journalist who scores highest on. Quality of writing scores lowest on beneficial to advertiser relationship. There you are. Can you can you yeah. look at this? Quality of writing, ten on ten. Yeah. Beneficial to advertiser relationship uh, is for is the lowest. <laughs> Conversely. The journalist who is best on advert, uh, tops the beneficial to advertiser relationship is among the lowest of quality of writing and prolific. Yeah? It's, it's very telling, it's a very telling chart. This is from the Time magazine, Time Incorporated's internal memos put out by the newspaper Guild. Put out by the newspaper Guild. So that's another thing that you have to see. And. Uh, yeah. The, 
As I said, PR is fast overtaking the world of journalism and incorporating it. When the British Petroleum, when the BP gas spill took place in the Gulf of Mexico, the journalists who attended the press conference, David Barstow of the New York Times wrote that he was astonished to find that there were far more PR persons than, than reporters in the audience, in the, in the press conference, because they had come there to learn from the feet of the master on how to do the PR. You know, the, uh, uh, the Australian sociologist and political scientist, Alexander Carey, put it so beautifully in one paragraph. He said that there were three great developments in the 20th century. Three developments of great political importance in the 20th century. The growth of democracy, the growth of corporate power, and the growth of corporate propaganda to stifle the growth of democracy. And I think that fairly covers much of the 20th century and quite a bit of our own. So the, uh, and he also said this, the success of corporate media's propaganda, the success of business propaganda in persuading us that we are free from propaganda is one of the most significant propaganda achievements of the 20th century. Now the new convergence issue. If you look at the last 20 years, 30 years, See, the newspapers in India, journals, were started by somebody with five rupees and a passion. The Hindu guys had, owners had five rupees, they borrowed another five rupees, they raised it, you started a newspaper. That era has completely gone when you have priced everybody but very rich corporations out of the media market. But three things happened, and it's pe peculiar to South Asia, and very special to India in the growing concentration. It's not just, I have to tell you this, the old type of media monopoly no longer exists. The monopoly within media, you know, a Ramnath Goenka controlling newspapers in the south, a Bennett Coleman and co controlling newspaper circulation in the west, that sort of monopoly does not exist. Now, the erstwhile media monopolies are small departments of much larger conglomerates that are not media. So Mukesh Ambani is the owner of the biggest media networks, Network 18 and a number of other things, but all those are a very tiny part of reliance. Then why do you patronize them? Why do you get into them? Because of the ideological, political clout and influence that you have by being in the media. So these are the new media monopolies. They're actually giant conglomerations across the world and in India. Second is that, so giant corporations com control the media. We have spoken about that. Then there are interlocking bonds in directorships, in companies. So on the board of media companies, I don't know if, when I feel depressed, I need some entertainment, I go and try searching who are the board of directors of each newspaper. <laughs> Dainik Jagran had someone from Ireland who didn't know a word of Hindi, but what does newspaper, what do newspapers have to do with news anyway? <laughs> so you had all the boards of directors are stuffed with directors of banks, former directors and general, former MDs of public sector banks. After retirement, they come onto these boards. They have, they have directors on their boards from real estate. Everyone has one tax lawyer. And this is who are your, the people presiding over the direction in which the media will move. The interlocking directorships are just incredible. There were people from General Electric and Raytheon on entities set up with one chapter overseas who became part of these directors. From the world, uh, Gavin O'Reilly from the World Press Institute was on the Dynamic Jargon's board for a while. At the same time this is happening, Oh, by the way, it's so complex. As I said, 200 or 300 different industries. The same, we're going on the same pattern as the US did in the 60s, 70s, and in the 70s and 80s, which Ben Begdikian, the author of the greatest media book of the, perhaps of the 20th century, The Media Monopoly, 
He said it's become so intricate.